Bankruptcy is a big word that we've seen a lot in the news recently. Bed Bath & Beyond, Smart Direct Club, WeWork, and so on and so forth. It is everywhere, but what does it mean exactly? Let me break it down for you. And by the way, if you're a small business owner in any kind of distress, you will want to stay to the end of this video because I'm gonna break down specifically what options are available to you as it relates to Chapter 11. I'm James, the business buying Brit, and I actually spend the majority of my time buying and acquiring small, high-quality businesses. That said, before I did this, I spent my career in turnaround and restructuring. So I'm intimately familiar with how Chapter 11 bankruptcies work and the whole environment in which they sit. So today we're gonna to do an overview video. So what is Chapter 11? Firstly, Chapter 11 bankruptcy is not a liquidation. And by that, I mean a liquidation where the business closes, everyone loses their jobs, everyone, everything gets sold off, and everyone just goes home. That is not what a Chapter 11 reorganization is. Chapter 11 actually gives the company a second chance at life. It actually freezes the debts that are built up up to this point and gives the company some breathing room so they can figure out a plan of reorganization, get it approved by the courts, and have that second lease of life. So as it relates to how creditors are paid through the bankruptcy case, there's something called the absolute priority rule, which is kind of the waterfall of how the money flows through the case. So then the principle states that the junior creditor, say an unsecured creditor, cannot get a recovery until the more senior creditor, say the secured creditor, gets their return. So what I've just described doesn't sound fair to creditors, does it? That they don't get a full recovery and yet the company somehow is allowed to continue to operate and continue into the future. Well, let me explain why it is. If the company does not file a reorganization procedure and does not continue, then more people lose. The creditors will get less money, so the creditor loses. The employees will lose their job, so the employees lose. The government loses because they don't get their tax revenue. The suppliers lose because their vendors don't get the materials paid for or are purchased anymore. And in addition to that, the consumer loses because the goods and services have disappeared from the marketplace. So in that setting, everyone loses. So this is actually a better scenario. So if you find yourself in this difficult situation, you've got to just assess where you're actually at. It's bad anyway, either everyone loses or just some people lose and it's somehow mitigated through this reorganization. So at least with a chapter 11, the company gets another go at it if they can emerge successfully from a chapter 11. Sometimes companies get into trouble for really legitimate reasons. Let's just take COVID, for example. That's all in our recent memories. Many small business owners who I personally think are under-championed, under-advocated for in our society, they were left scrambling, trying to figure out how to change their strategy in order to remain viable through a very, very difficult time. That is just one example. There are so many reasons why businesses get into trouble. This gives them that opportunity to reorganize and emerge. So now we know why Chapter 11 exists. So who can actually use it? Almost anyone can file a Chapter 11. That includes corporations, partnerships, sole proprietors, and even individuals. Most people talk about it as it relates to companies though, because individuals have other options available to them, such as a Chapter 13. Once a company actually enters bankruptcy, that those first few days has a strange sense of calm about it because of that automatic stay that's coming into place. That automatic stay is the freezing of the pre-petition debts that we talked about earlier. The debtor, which means the company that's in bankruptcy, then has to put together a plan of reorganization. It has to be feasible and it has to be in the best interest of creditors to get it through the court system. Putting these plans together involves negotiating with creditors, which can be difficult. This is why you probably should be working with experienced bankruptcy professionals at this point. In a regular Chapter 11, the plan that you put together has to be accepted by the majority of each class of creditor. There is a mechanism in the Chapter 11 case called a cram down, which means if you don't get all of the necessary approvals for each class of creditors, it is possible under certain scenarios to cram down the plan over that class of creditors to kind of force them to accept it. You are right for thinking at this point, this is starting to get rather complicated. So at this point, we should take a step back and see chapter 11 for what it really is. It is an in-court proceeding that is very expensive, but it is often necessary when you've got diverse stakeholder groups and a lot of different creditors to negotiate with. But if you can negotiate with all of your creditors outside of court, nine times out of 10, it will be cheaper. So Mr. or Miss Small Business Owner, what is the good news for you? Well, in 2019, new legislation was introduced to make it easier for small businesses to reorganize. That is called Subchapter 5. It's Subchapter 5 of 
Chapter 11. It takes out a lot of the complexity and allows small businesses to get back on their feet quicker. In a subchapter five, only the debtor, the company itself, can file a plan of reorganization. That's different to a normal chapter 11. And it is not necessary to obtain consent from all the classes of creditors, as long as the court deems the plan to be fair and equitable. There are no creditor committees in a subchapter five case, and that absolute priority rule that we talked about earlier, where there's that waterfall of money flowing from class to creditor to from the senior more down to the more junior, that doesn't exist as well. So all of these things make it far more simple and less complex. However, some of the really good things about Chapter 11 still exist from the debtor perspective. The ability for the debtor to get out of a burdensome lease still exists, and that automatic stay that freezes the pre-petition debts to be worked out in court is also comes into place. So you still get a lot of the key benefits of a Chapter 11. But I would say most importantly, a Subchapter 5 restructuring is cheaper and is much quicker than a regular Chapter 11. So it's a really good tool for small businesses. We have to remember that if you're in this situation, you didn't plan to be here. This is not anyone's plan A, but if you are here, it may be the best option available to you to keep the company going, to keep jobs, to keep the taxes flowing, to keep the supplier's revenue going, like all of these different things and the consumer service with your goods and products, like all of these macro things as we discussed that are important, a subchapter five may be your best option. Honestly, this is painful, but it's probably much less painful than just completely going out of business. Normally at this point I say I'm James the Business Buying Brit signing off, but today I'm James the founder of Store Advisors signing off. Store Advisors is an advisory firm that works with small businesses who are in too much debt, in distress or otherwise discontented. If you need help, please reach out. I would love to try and help myself and if I can't, I will point you in the right direction. Hey, I'm James the Business Buying Brit signing off.